that taste of adventure in our family. I mean, and I love to, I love the great outdoors, and I love, I love life. Some of that is, is, is him. Yep. Him through the books, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And my father and mother also. And the drinking. Yep. He was an alcoholic. Yep. And the fear of suicide. Mm -hmm. He killed himself, right? Hi, Margo. Our obsession with death. Hi. Hi. Um, did you stop drinking altogether? And if so, is it an everyday struggle for you? Um, I stopped drinking altogether, and it's not. It's something I was completely ready to, to give up. Have you had, this was, you got out of the Betty Ford Center two, two years ago? A little over two years. And no relapses? No. None? No. <laughs> Why, uh, from your experience, since most people do relapse, why do you feel you didn't? Well, I haven't yet, by the grace of God. I was ready to quit, and I really wanted Do you sobriety. think it's time? Do you think when someone's ready, then, then it works? It works when you want it, it when you're willing to listen. The, the whole key is to, to, live your, to look at yourself in, your, in the mirror and to be able to, to be, practice rigorous honesty, and that's the ticket to life. Hi, Margo. When you had the bulimia, I mean, did anybody know about this? Did you hide it that well? See, it's one of those great diseases like eating or drinking alone. It's one of those diseases that you do by yourself in, by yourself in the closet behind closed doors. Was that harder to lick than alcoholism? Oh, my God, yes. And were there more relapses on Oh, yes. Every, every time I was purging, I was saying that was the last time. And the, the guilt that goes along with that is unbelievable. And... And also, you know, I'm, I'm working on a book, and I'm sitting there, right, you know, this has just happened. I'm going, oh, my God, how can I be a, you know, how can I help people and talk about this stuff if I'm a hypocrite? You know, you don't think that's guilt? That's the worst. So are we understanding that it, you have not been successful in looking? No, I have been you successful. Have. Thank for God. For how long? Well, for <laughs> a reasonable for long amount enough, of time. For a reasonable amount of time. And, um... Knock on wood. <laughs> Hi, Marco. Do you, when you really look in the mirror, are you really pleased with what you see? I mean, I know that you're gorgeous, but do you really feel happy? You know it is a good you question. I, I own my happiness now. I'm, I am very, very happy with the way things are going. I mean, everything is like so new and I'm learning so much. It's the best. I've never felt better in my life. Do you like the person's looks, person you see in the mirror? Do you like uh, her looks? It's always greener on the other side, let me tell you. <laughs> There's always something wrong. But I like it. I, I, can, I look at myself in the mirror much easy, more easily now than I did ever before. Hi, Margo. I really applaud you on your um, alcoholism. Thank you. Uh, do, did you or do you now go to AA meetings? Um, I don't go to as many meetings as I should, but I do believe in the 12-step program. Do you go to any meetings? Yes, I do. But just not as many as you should. Not as many as I should because of the way I travel. But um, it's the best program. And OA also. Overeaters Anonymous. Do you feel the need for reinforcement meetings every so often? Yes. It's very important. How do you control the weight without the bulimia if that's a concern? Is it every um, you moment? You know what? When you have bulimia, the, it's such a fallacy because by eating and throwing up doesn't make you thinner. Your, your body... Um, takes the calories and, and just like, like a sponge with the oil or the flour or whatever. I mean, just uses, I mean, I never lost weight when I was doing that. It's, comp it's so psychological. You think it's going to help, you get thinner and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't at all. You, um, when you went to the Betty Ford Center, who paid for that? Um, my father. Were you close to your father? Yes, I am. And is uh, he doing all right? He's doing fantastic. Is he proud of you? I hope so. <laughs> What's he going to think about Playboy? Well, <laughs> I called him a couple of days ago and he hadn't seen it. Now, I called him last night. He was watching the basketball finals and he didn't say anything because the basketball finals were on. So <laughs> I think, um, I'm sure that I did. I mean, I wanted them to be like a, an Italian Vogue layout and to be in very good taste. So I, I hope that he likes I hope he likes it. I'm sure he does. He better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll Maybe be right he didn't back. Even, won't even look. Wondering, are you currently seeing anybody right now? We left after two husbands. Is there anybody? <laughs> is, is there, were there three? 
No. I stopped asking. No. no. <laughs> is there Thank any, you. We'll is there anyone the now? <laughs> no. Would you like there to be someone? Um, yes, of course. Aren't we all looking for... But do you have your eye on some specific person? Um, no. Okay. But, Tell you me. know, where are the great men? <laughs> where are they, you guys? <laughs> I guess Playboy will help. Probably for all... <laughs> For all the wrong reasons, though. You see? Tell me about the dyslexia, because I think that will help other uh, young people who are watching. Well, first of all, um, I'll tell you what, what happened. I was, my best friend saw, saw something on 60 Minutes, this is a year and a half ago, on the Erlen Institute for Reading Disabilities. And th they said that they, he saw this program on television and then said, Margo, you should go there. And what they do is they treat dyslexia with, uh, by testing you with a myriad of different ra rainbow colors. And um, I'm going, okay, I better go in there. And so I spent two days testing with these colors. And the first, the first day, nothing happened. I'm going, oh, my God. Am I, maybe I'm not dyslexia. Made up, maybe I'm not dyslexic. Maybe I'm just, like, stupid, <laughs> like, all those years, you know, because nobody really told me that I had dyslexia growing up. And so it was, like, so tough. And then finally I hit blue. And when I put on these glasses, all of the words stopped moving around the page. And you would and never have found that out on your own. The chances are very slim, right? That's why I was, that's why it's so great to be able to say, you know, I was a Hemingway and never, you know, not being able to read. I can say that now, but God, I was always so afraid. When you were a child, did you feel stupid? Oh, yes. I mean, and, and uh, when I was growing up, all, most of my friends, I didn't really have any friends my own age. The, uh, the teachers were always my friend. But it was hard. <laughs> Hi, I'm just Lexus Asta, so I know what you're talking about. It's a about. great way of looking at yeah. things, as, yeah. as, as, if you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had two questions. Um, I find it mind-boggling that you just walked into New York and didn't know anybody. Uh, you were so young. Just how did you get started in the business? Do you think maybe the name helped or oh, did yes. you know where to go? Absolutely. Um, and, and also, what did you mean by you had a problem with food when you were 10? Um, which one should I answer first? The last one first. The problem with food, I think my since my mother was a a, a cordon bleu chef and a fantastic cook and and she was always very thin. There was a control issue there. Never eat between meals and and um, I think a competitive thing there with with uh, doing sports. I think it ha a lot of issues happen when you're when you're small and you didn't. I mean. God bless her soul, she she had cancer for 15 years and she died a year and a half ago. But she did the best she could do because she didn't know. But, you know, it's all about communicating with your kids, not yelling at them. <laughs> had you already uh, been out of the Betty Ford Center when Mother passed on? Um, no, thank God. I mean, because we had such a fantastic bonding um, when before she died. I so mean, you were was, able to do that? Yes, it was the best, just the best. And you feel, that I would feel very good about that. Oh, I, I mean, absolutely. Thank we'll goodness. take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Margo, I get the impression that you're, you seem a little self-conscious and you have such a beautiful voice. And I wonder, do you think that if you had stayed in Ketchum, Idaho, that life would have been simpler? Or would you have been happier there than what you've gone through? I would it, never have stayed in Ketchum, Idaho. You I'm have. Too, I've got too much um, sp adventure spirit in me. Because it, it just would never have happened. When you first came here, like you didn't like anybody that was around you or dealing with you. Like you oh, were no. Hurt. The problem was is I... I, was, I found the good in everybody. It's just I, di I didn't know when to say no. I mean, I sort of believed everybody that, you know, that came around. I was very naive. What do, what does Margot want now? Oh, my God, a great love affair. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like everybody. And, and a good, and to work with a great director. And Sorry? Play. And to work with a great director. To work with a great director, a great role. To make role. movies that make a difference. You really want to act. Yeah, and I want to make movies that really make a difference, that have something to say, that help people. Which is saying a lot nowadays, but I think, you know, you have to say what you want, and that's what I want. 
Is it hard? Do you have financial problems? Do I? Always. I can't count. <laughs> I'm dyslectic. <laughs> No, I, actually, I don't worry about it. You do not think about it or worry about it. I should, but... How did you lose the 65 pounds? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It, very hard. Sheer willpower and determination. A lot of hiking, a lot of water, a lot of vegetables, and um, it's called stay hungry. Or make hunger your best friend. No. <laughs> was, it, was it really rough? Did it go slowly? Mm, it's never fast enough. You know, I mean... God, it's so, it's so hard. I mean, I just, I, it's, it's like never fast enough. It should have been off yesterday. It's a constant struggle. But, I mean, now I think I've got it under control. But, I mean, I still can't believe I did the pictures in Playboy. It's just, it's, it still blows my mind. But did you like them when you saw them? Did you feel good about that? Yeah. Good. Absolutely. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. People you always wonder about, you know, and you've been very kind and open to allow us to go into your life. Somebody in the audience said, uh, Margot, do you have the coping skills now to get through the setbacks and the problems? And you said, yeah, I meditate and I I'm very spiritual. And you are. And we all of us today wish you good luck. Thank you so much. And I wish you good luck. Some members of our audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by...